In today's video, we're going to be using Autodesk Inventor to create an exploded view of an assembly that we've created. It's going to look something like this when we're done. Okay, so in a previous video, I made a Lego castle, and that basically looked like that. And what I've done here is exploded it by making all the individual parts break apart from one another about five millimeters. Alrighty, so I'll close that exploded view up and I'll show you how we can get started. All right, so first thing you need to do is open up an assembly that you've created before in Inventor. Okay, and in this case, it's the Lego castle. It's made up of all sorts of individual parts, and we've stuck them all together using constrain options. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to the File menu and make a new document. New document needs to be a metric template, and I want you to go right to the bottom of this box on the right and choose this standard millimeter Inventor presentation option, and click Create. From here, a box is going to come up and say, what file would you like to insert here, or what file would you like to explode? And as I said before, it is the little Lego castle that we've made. So I just need to navigate through my account and find that castle. There it is there, the castle assembly. And it comes in looking like this. What we can do now is start to tweak the components using this tool up here to break them all apart. Now it's a little bit of a tedious process in the newer version of Inventor. There used to be an option called Auto Explode that would explode each individual part for you. Unfortunately that um, option has been taken out of the newer version of Inventor so you have to tweak it manually. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to highlight every single part on our castle except the bottom two bricks. Once they're all highlighted we head up to Tweak Components some little arrows appear, ask you what way you want to tweak these components, or what way do you want to move them. I'm going to press the up arrow, and then it will say how far do you want to move them. I'll type in 5 mil, and you can see they've jumped up 5 mil from those bottom two bricks. So you just press enter. Again, highlight all the bricks except those bottom two blue ones now. Click tweak components at the top, press the up arrow, type in 5, press enter. And you basically have to keep doing this, it's a little bit tedious, over and over again until you get all components tweaked. And they should all be 5 mil apart from one another. But I'll try and do this as quick as I can so I don't hold you up. Just highlighting the bricks, tweaking the components, pressing the up arrow and typing in 5. Press enter and you're ready to do the next ones. Up arrow, 5, enter. Zoom in a bit here. Highlight. Tweak, up arrow, 5, enter. Highlight, tweak, up arrow, 5, enter. Hey, hopefully you're following along here with this. I know I'm going pretty quick. I'm nearly done now. Two to go. Last one. There we go. So zooming out now, we've got our exploded view all done. All those Lego parts are five millimeters apart from one another, and that is an exploded view. So what we need to do is save this presentation. Go at the top of the save disk, and we're just going to call it Castle Exploded View, and click Save. Okay. Once that's saved, what we're going to do now is create a drawing that labels all the different parts that we've used in our um, little castle assembly. So the way we do that is we go to the file menu, go to new, choose the metric templates again, head down to the third option where you've got drawing, and we're looking for this ANSI millimeter inventor drawing. Click create once you've selected that. You might recognize this from previous tutorials. What we're going to do is we're going to head straight up to the base option here. Don't worry about this um, box that comes up, just click OK on that. And you can see we are bringing in an exploded view of the castle. You can scale it up. If I go to 3 to 1, it's probably going to be a little bit too big for my page, so I'll have to make it a 2 to 1 scale. You just make yours the biggest you can get so it fits on your page. And you can also use a little cube here to rotate the look of your castle. I think I might just go this side view, that way you can see each individual part pretty clearly. So that's looking good. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check this little box here so it's shaded. That means it will be coloured in when I place it in, rather than just the outlines of each Lego brick. So you want that turned on. We want to press this little light bulb here to toggle this label visibility. We want to turn this label on. And we're simply going to write in there, Exploded View. Okay. The last thing we'll do is hit this little pencil here and just ensure that our font is at its biggest size. So let's highlight all the font here and make it 6.1 mil. Press OK. Press OK. That drops our exploded view drawing into the actual document and you can see we've got exploded view with a scale of 2 to 1. So it's twice its usual size. Next thing I want to do is create a parts list which just outlines what parts we have used to create this castle assembly. The way we do that is we head up to the annotate tab up the top here. We first of all need to click and select our Lego um, assembly here. And then, still in this annotate tab, we need to select parts list over on the right hand side. A little box will come up with a bit of crap here. We don't need to worry about any of that. Just press OK. And you've got a rectangle now that follows your mouse. When you click once on your page, that puts a parts list into your document. OK, it's a little bit small at the moment, so I might just right click on the text and go to Edit Parts List Style. And choosing this bottom pencil here, the edit text style, we're going to change the text height. Might go to the biggest to 6.1 mil. Save it, and close it, and that just makes the text a little bit bigger. You can stretch your table out if you'd like, just to make it all fit nicely. There you go, it's a bit easier to read. So what we've got is we've got all the different Lego pieces written down, and the quantity of each one, so how many we've used. Right, some of these part names aren't very descriptive, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this table, and I can actually get in and edit the part names. Okay, so instead of calling it example 2x1, I'll get rid of the word example and call it a 2x1 Lego brick. It's a bit more meaningful. Okay, now on the next one, get rid of the word example, add in Lego brick, and just keep going through and giving and give your... um parts, meaningful names. Uh, 4 by 2 Lego brick. There we go. You'll also notice we've got this description column here, which is completely empty at the moment, so it's serving no purpose. So what you can do is right-click on that description column, go to Column Chooser, and you'll see the description column here. Just click on it and remove it. That way we're just left with three different columns. You can go through and add in all sorts of different columns, but we're not going to worry about that now. So just click OK, click Apply. You can see our table over here is looking a lot better, so we can click on OK. Might just stretch it out a little bit. Go. It's not looking too bad, but we don't need item stretched out as far as it is. It's just a matter of resizing it, getting it looking pretty good. So you've now got a parts list written on the right hand side. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to label each of these parts so that they match up with what's written in the table over here. And the way we do that is we use these balloons. So click on the word balloon, go and click on the edge of one of the Lego bricks. It'll highlight red when you're on the edge and you can click and drag out and that will have a balloon with a number in it. You need to double click to drop that balloon into place and you can see we've got the number 7 here. So we go over to our table. Item number 7 is the 1x1 one one sloped Lego brick. Okay, so we now know that this red brick up here is a 1x1 one one sloped Lego brick. The one below that Okay, we still got the balloon tool selected here, so let's click on the edge of this next shape, come straight out, double click. So that's part three. So that's a one by one Lego brick, just a normal one. Head down to the next one here, try and get it straight across and double click. It's part two, so a two by two Lego brick. And if I put that in there, 
that's also part two. Now it's up to you if you label part two again. Okay, you don't need to label it more than once, but if you want, you can. Okay, so you can delete that balloon if you want, because we've already labeled it here, or you can keep it. I might as well just keep it in for now. Okay, and put in the next one there. I'm just going to go through and label most of these parts, I think. As I said before, you only have to label them once if you would like. I'm not going to label the ones that go down the left hand side here, it's pretty obvious what they are. Obviously they're the same as these, so we'll just label them once. Just doing this quickly now so we can get it all finished. There we go, so we've labelled each of the different Lego parts that we've got in our assembly. They correspond to different parts in the table here. The last thing I would do is just down in the bottom right is put a title, okay, for the name of your part. So just up in the annotate section, grab the text tool, click in the title, and just call it Exploded Lego Castle. All right, hopefully that text fits. Yeah, it's going to fit nicely. All right, so that's all I would do for that um, drawing. So again, you'll need to save that and just call it Castle Drawing. I might call it Exploded Castle Drawing. And make sure you save it somewhere meaningful. Click Save. Just say Yes to All or click OK. And that's fine. Alrighty, so that's how you create Exploded Views in Autodesk Inventor.